dear students i am sudhan kumar v kulkarni working as a lecturer in a department of mechanical engineering bldas polytechnic vijaypur and i would like to welcome you all for my new channel that is mech study circle learning never stops so in this particular video we are concentrating on the polytechnic students basically the mechanical engineering students and in that also i am going to give you the brief idea regarding the measuring instruments or measurement subjects okay so first of all we'll start with the syllabus and particularly i have divided the syllabus into six categories or the six parts that means 15 minutes of each sessions in that each session i am concentrating on the two particular points and i will try to complete that particular two points in 15 to 20 minutes so that you will not get the any bore so first of all we'll move on to the syllabus and check what the syllabus will contain okay so let us start as you know that this is the unit 1 measuring instruments and it is of a 12 hours unit okay so we'll start with the first point that is measurement in that measurement we'll start with the definition of the measurement and also we'll study the methods of measurement here we have six different methods of measurement and i will enlight the brief idea about all the six different methods of measurement okay and after that we have a significance of measurement and here we'll study what are the importance of measurements that has been studied in particular this topic okay so let us start with the first session or the first part that is measurement okay as the definition says that measurement means it is a determination of anything that exists in some amount or quantity if those things that that exist are related to the mechanical engineering then the determination of such amount are referred to as a mechanical measurement in the first line they will says that measurement means it is a determination of anything that exist in some amount or quantity that means whatever the thing is there if it is existing in some amount or quantity which can be easily compared with the standards that will call it as a measurement that comparison or that comparing process we will call it as a measurement okay if it is or this thing exist related to the mechanical engineering that means if it is a measurement of pressure or a force or a torque or a load or whatever it may be if it is related to the mechanical engineering things that means the measurement will call it as a mechanical measurement or sometimes it will also be called as a measurement is defined as the process of numerical evaluation of a dimension or it is the process of comparison with the standard measuring instrument uh, here they will says that measurement is a process of numerical evaluation and note the point that numerical evaluation of a dimensions or it is a process of comparison with the standard measuring instrument if you compare something which we don't know with the help of a standard measuring instrument that process of comparison which we will call it as a measurement okay then other otherwise we can also say it as a measurement is defined as a process or the act of obtaining the quantitative comparison between the predefined standard and an unknown magnitude okay why we need this measurement the basic aim of measurement is in industry is to check whether the component has been manufactured to the requirement of a specification or not because in industries whatever the manufacturing unit is there that manufacturing unit or the manufacturer has to check whether the component has been manufactured with the correct dimensions or not otherwise what will happen one product will be having a uh, different dimension and another product will be having a different dimension then this will affect on the quality of the product as well as the consumer so that whatever the product they are manufacturing that has to be compared perfectly or that has to be measured with the standard measuring instrument let us start with the next part that is requirements of measurement here we'll study what are all the main requirements of measurements okay so if the results of the measuring measurement has to be meaningful then the following two condition has to be satisfied otherwise we cannot say that measurement is correct or true 
okay the first condition says that the standard used for the comparison must be accurately known and internationally accepted i have given an example that a length cannot be simply said too long but it must be said comparatively longer than some standard the second point says that the procedure and the apparatus used for the comparison must be provable and internationally accepted otherwise we cannot use this particular measurement because whatever the type of apparatus or the instruments that you are using for comparison comparing the measuring measurement for the uh, purpose of measurement that has to be internationally accepted we will move on to the methods of measurement in precision measurement various methods of measurements are adopted depending upon the accuracy required and the amount of permissible error the methods of measurements can be classified as direct method of measurement indirect method of measurement comparative method of measurement coincidence method of measurement deflection method of measurement and last but not the least complementary method of measurement okay that means we have divided measurement into six different categories and we'll start to briefly study about all these measurement methods in one by one okay so let us start with the first one that is direct method of measurement all the physical dimensions are generally measured by direct method of measurement this is a simple method of measurement in which the value of the quantity to be measured is obtained directly note the point that whatever the measurement is done it is done directly without any calculative part okay it is a quite commonly used for the length measurement for example measurement by using a scale or a vernier caliper or a micrometers bevel protractor etc are comes under the direct method of measurement this method of measurement is most widely used in the production it is not very accurate because it depends on the human insensitiveness in making the judgment so here i have given three different examples in that first example i have drawn a line that line is ab and which is of 11.1 that means 111 mm or 11.1 centimeters long the, here i have compared with the scale that is the primary standard that i am using for measurement of this particular line in the second uh, diagram or in the second uh, part i am i have given as rectangular block which is of 69 mm length or 6.9 cm of length and here also i have just compared with the scale and i have given the values without any extra calculative part and in the third diagram i have given a pen which is uh, having a length of nearly 13.9 mm oh sorry 13.9 cm or 139 mm and here also i have not given any calculative part i have just only compared with the standard measuring scale so this is what we will call it as a direct method of measurement without any extra calculation parts okay so next we will move on to the indirect method of measurements there are number of quantities that cannot be measured directly by using some instruments for example we cannot measure the strain in the bar we may have to record the temperature and pressure in a deep depths of the ground or in some far off remote places in such cases indirect method of measurement are used in a direct method of measurement the value of quantity to be measured is obtained by measuring other quantities which are functionally related to it and the required value is obtained by some mathematical relationship note down that here we are going to making the mathematical calculations in the indirect method of measurement some transducing devices called as a transducer is used which is coupled to a chain of apparatus that forms a part of the measuring system in this system the quantity which is to be measured is converted into some other measurable quantity by the transducer the transducer is used such that the input and the output are proportional to each other okay the indirect method of measurement consists of the system that senses 
converts and finally presents the analogous output in the form of a displacement or a chart for example angle measurement by using a sign bar or measurement of a screw pitch diameter by using a three wire methods comes under the indirect methods of measurement here i have given an example of a sign bar in the first part you can see that sign bar is placed on a gauge blocks here what we need is we have to measure the angle or inclination angle of that particular part so that i can measure the angle of that part by measuring the number of gauge blocks that has been placed below the sign bar so here i am not directly comparing the inclination angle um, with the help of any scales but i am going to calculate with the help of some calculative methods and i also mentioned another method that is three wire method in this three wire method i have to measure the pitch circle diameter for that reason uh, for that i have used the three wires and a micrometer screw gauge okay in the third uh, diagram i have mentioned the strain gauge here i cannot able to measure the strain present in a particular member directly so for that reason i have applied a strain gauge on that particular part and i am converting that strain into a resistance of that particular strain gauge and uh, for uh, that particular resistance has been converted into change in the voltage or current of the strain gauge and that can be easily identified okay so next we'll come for the comparative method of measurement in this comparative method of measurement the value of quantity to be measured is compared with a known value of the same quantity or other quantity particularly related to it so that only the deviations from the master gauge are determined here we will not not at all accurately uh, providing the dimensions but we are saying that it is having a deviation with the help with the standard or the master gauge okay for and the examples for the particular comparative method of measurements are dial indicator and as well as the comparators here these are the dial indicator as well as comparator here I have given an example of a optical comparator which is used for the measurement of threads here we cannot get any diff, uh, type of value values but we can say that it is apart from that particular standard dimension that only can be observed in the comparative method of measurement next the coincidence method of measurement it is a differential method of measurement in which a very small difference between the value of the quantity to be measured and the reference is determined by the observation of the coincidence or the alignment okay here the coincidence means the alignment of certain lines or signals for example measurement of measurement by using the vernier caliper or the micrometer here i have given the diagrammatic representation of the vernier caliper here what we will do we will check the dimension or the diameter of that particular object it says that it is having the dimension we have to observe that where the zero line is coinciding with the main scale okay so first of all it is having the dimension nearly it is crossing the 19th value that means the main scale reading is 19 and on the vernier scale it is coinciding with the 45th that means 45th marking is coinciding with the vernier scale division for that reason i have to take it as a 19.45 or otherwise what i have to do 19 plus msr into vsd here what we are doing we are comparing or we are checking the coincidence of that particular lines or the grades okay in the next part we'll check the deflection method okay in the deflection method the value of the quantity to be measured is directly indicated by a deflection of a pointer on a calibrated scale as you can see that if the there is any changes in the values that has been identified with the help of a movement or deflection of that particular pointer this is very simple method and lastly we'll come for the final part of this particular methods of measurement that is a complementary method of measurement here 
In this method, the value of the quantity to be measured is combined with the known value of the same quantity. The combination is so adjusted that the sum of these two values is equal to predetermined comparison value. For example, determination of volume of a solid by a liquid displacement. I think you all know about the experiment related to the Archimedes principle, Eureka. Okay. So I have given a simple example here in the first jar I have placed the water I know the amount of water I have collected that is 40 milliliters and then I have put a stone into that one and the level of water has been raised to 52 milliliters and after that what I have did I have placed the cork into that particular stone thread and once again I have placed it into a water and the water level has been raised for the 58 milliliter that means here what I have to measure is the measurement of cork has to be done and I have comparing it with the water okay for that reason the volume of the cork is equal to 58 minus 52 58 is the last value that I have get after come uh, after adding the cork into that particular water okay 52 is the value uh, by adding the stone into the water okay finally I got the 6 milliliter and volume can be expressed as a 6 centimeter cubes okay so finally we came for the last part of this particular session that is significance of measurement or importance of measurement so let us start with the first point that is measurement provides the fundamental base for the research and the development for creating or for making any new invention or new research or development we need the measurement second point says that measurement provides the basis for control process if you want to control any process whatever it may be that we require measurement that measurement plays a very important role in particularly controlling the processes okay third point says that it helps to achieve the quality of the product if you want to improve the quality of your product whatever you are manufacturing you need the measurement in process industries it helps to achieve the maximum efficiency it provides the basis for the maintenance of proper operations it increases the consumer confidence by providing the proper measured products and also it helps in maintaining the health and safety of the manufacturer as well as the consumer and automatic controls based on the measurement so these are the significance of measurement and next we will move on to the last part that is so with this notes you can answer the following questions that is define measurement the definition of measurement has been answered with the help of this video explain the requirements of measurement list the various methods of measurement explain direct method of measurement and indirect method of measurement and list the significance or importance of measurement can be answered with this video so do you have any question ask me by commenting below or if you have any suggestions please write on comments so that I can improve myself so Thank you one and all for watching this video.